What's up, everyone? How's it going? It is I, Jay, with the POE check-in. We're like two weeks into the league. I haven't really played that much because I have a new job and it eats up all of my time. But I played a lot. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to go over this character. I have multiple characters. I have four, technically three. But I'm only going to really go over this character because this is the character that I started the league with. This is a Smite Slayer. Now you're probably wondering why I didn't do champion, literally just because I don't want to play champion. And I like Slayer a lot more. This was originally going to be a Flicker Strike build, uh, but then I got Val Smite and then I found a Legion and then I popped a Val Smite and I said, why would I ever use any other skill in the game ever again? So, keeping things straightforward, uh, I have a Paradoxia or Paradoxica as my uh, main hand. Uh, before I was using Rebuka to Val because I got one of those to drop and it just has a bunch of flat damage on it, made it work really well. Um, like I said, I was originally using Flicker Strike and that really worked uh, pretty well, but then I got uh, Smite, so I went and bought a Paradoxica. Nice cheap one. Um, Replica Abyssius, obviously, if you're running an elemental attack, then this is going to be like the highest damage you're going to get nine times out of ten in terms of a helmet slot. Uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, definitely helped my damage a lot. Uh, in order to explain this and this, I have to, my shield and my belt, I have to explain the gloves. I'm using Comb Spirit, which gives you rage regeneration for every hundred life recovery you have uh, per second. So, uh, as you can see, I'm sitting here with 50 rage. Because I have Immortal Flesh, I get 339.5 life uh, per second from this. In addition to Rise of the Phoenix, which has another 173, which goes up 200, which is really nice. So these two give me a ton of life regeneration. Uh, that I am making use of, plus some life regeneration nodes on a tree, but I'll go over the tree a little bit more in a second. But that just gives me an, uh, enough rage regeneration that I can pop Berserk, and I can have it up for quite a bit of time. Now, it's not a super long amount of time, and there's obviously builds that have a lot longer rage uh, sustain, but, I mean, this is more than enough to, you know, clear through a pack, and then you're only looking at, uh, how, I don't even know how long the cooldown on this is, but it's a super short cooldown. And if you pop stuff like Enduring Cry, that gives you a little bit, uh, a couple extra seconds but, you know, by the time the rage regenerates back to max by itself, this is off cooldown. So I'm not really stressing about that and trying to push that anymore at the current moment. Uh, rings are just, you know, rings for resistances, amulet for resistance. I'm running chest piece shroud of the lightless, which is once again, mostly just for damage purposes. And, uh, percent life is useful and I need to get more jewel sockets to start getting more abyss jewels slotted in. Uh, the boots actually suck, <laughs> but... You know, that's what I got right now. I've, and then I kind of switched off to other characters uh, just because of some items that I got that I wanted to try out. So boots still suck. But yeah, I feel like gear wise, it's all pretty straightforward for what the character is and does. Um, running determination and vitality for my auras. Vitality helps with the uh, rage generation, obviously, and determination for more armor. Looking at 13,000 armor right now. Um, also got the fines banner here for shenanigans and um i feel like the, the the build isn't going to do astronomical in terms of single target this is mostly a mapping character just to clear through maps as fast as possible which was my goal for my first character to help build currency and this character definitely has helped me build a little bit of currency i'm like kind of mid through yellow maps right now so nothing too difficult but in terms of skill tree uh, and it's a little bit all over the place because I tried two-handed, I tried one-handed, I tried dual wield. Well, things are kind of all over the place. Um, but I kind of went the normal route with uh, duelists, went down, got the shield stuff, got life, got light, uh, leech, melee stuff. Uh, since we're using smite, champion of the cause gives you increased AoE as, uh, as well as uh, improve the effect of the smite aura, which is really nice. Life for all the arms so you can pop in during cry instantly grabbing some accuracy here i got unwavering stance which i didn't really get because it's unwavering stance but because i have my jewel there i wanted it to you know bounce off of that but then i slotted it here and i really got some good stuff war cry buff effect is useful melee crit that's useful melee strike multi that's useful uh, ignites that's useless but we got five percent increased strength 
and five percent physical taking as fire so we got some useful stuff here and like i was pretty happy with that so i decided to just slide it there and deal with it but yeah in this section here regeneration regeneration there's a couple of other regen nodes to get as well like this is two percent of life all stationary which can be useful uh say if i'm fighting a boss and i just post up and i'm just spamming smite i'll be stationary so that, that could be useful as well so i might grab that um no wavering stance I, I feel like not 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 hurting me so i'm keeping it over here accuracy or melee shenanigans life sword I got the mark here, which is part of when I was running Flicker, but this still seems to be pretty useful for me. At point blank, which I really don't need, I was trying out Molten Strike and I was doing okay, but I like Smite more, so I gotta respect that. And the Onslaught as well. Pretty straightforward. Nothing too crazy. I guess for the Ascendancy, I can go over that too. Uh, I got Impact for increased AoE, makes the Smite AoE even bigger, which is really fun. As well as when I was running Molten Strike and stuff like that, makes the balls when they explode, hit the ground, explode, makes them. Uh, Bigger AoE helps them overlap and do more damage and Brutal Fervor and Endless Hunger for more leech, which I think uh, if I was to continue with this character, I would drop Endless Hunger and grab uh, Bane of Legends and Overwhelm. That's the thought process. So yeah. So let's go into a map. Like I said, the character isn't amazing. Like I said, I'm also like mid through map, uh, yellow maps right now. I'm like just really starting to ramp up with those. Uh, let's grab a map that I actually enjoy though. So sure, right? Don't mind my lack of currency. Uh, I had, I had, I've gotten a couple divines to drop this. Like I got like three divines to drop total. Which is why I just wanted to experiment with other characters and try them out. Uh, and why this character kind of been sitting here gathering dust since the uh, league start. Yeah, we pull up on the map, let the rage build up, pop a uh, frenzy computer catch up. And then I really just, I don't even really think about popping Berserk. But when I feel as though I do need it, just pop it. Embrace the damage. The Val Smite shenanigans are absolutely insane. I can show that off here in a second. So you got enemies on the screen, you pop that, you can just the, the skill itself proliferates through the entire crowd, which is absolutely insane. And really fun and like super satisfying. As you know, you can see here the single target is not crazy. But if I pop Berserk, Berserk goes a long way and it helps out. Even during single targets, I'll still pop the Val Smite because it uh, makes the uh, effect from the buff from Val Smite is, is stronger than the normal Smite effect. So. You have, you know, the means to. There's no reason not to pop it. But yeah, we'll just let it. We'll just let a decent sized group here build up, and then I'll pop Berserk, and I'll pop Val Smite, and then they're pretty much all gone, which is really nice. And it'll go off screen too. With as much AOE as this has, it, it'll it'll go off screen and it'll do its thing. So the clear is really good here, especially when a Legion pops up. That's that's really that's kind of where my Atlas tree is right now. Is just Legion. Um, and like general map stuff. I'm no Atlas professional. I don't play like hardcore. I only I killed each end game boss once, and that's pretty much it. I don't really I don't really play to to hit the super end game. So, right, so while it's here, uh, we'll also talk about the league mechanic, the Forbidden Sanctum battle is called, I guess. Uh, which I have some stuff built up, so. I guess we'll do one of these. Um, I like it a lot. I'm a big roguelike kind of guy. This doesn't really scratch the roguelike itch, but I see the foundation of it and how it affects it. Um, I just, th there's just a couple things I don't like. I like the resolve being the mechanic here to, to, to really limit your progression. Nothing here hits particularly hard. I don't think I've ever died in here with any of my characters. 
but I, I definitely like the resolve thing being the factor that that you know makes or breaks your character. However, what I learned, especially with this being my first character, is one melee sucks right now, but two, <laughs> two is that this is a little bit harder if you play melee, especially if you play like true melee. Like, like I can stay all the way over here and still do damage, right? I can stay a pretty decent distance away. Not full screen, but far enough that if he starts doing an attack, I got plenty of time to move. Range builds 100%, and they've kind of always had the advantage. They can stay super far away and don't have to worry about their resolve at all. Which is eh. Uh, the different enemies there, they have super telegraphed attacks. So that's really cool. And that makes sense for something where if you get hit, you're at a disadvantage because you lose resolve. You, don't, you might not die, but you're going to lose resolve, which means the odds of you losing the Sanctum are higher. So having enemies that have these very telegraphed attacks is good. Because that gives you the chance to get out the way, make it fair. But once again, your melee, you got a lot more distance to move. Which means you're more likely to get hit compared to someone that's playing a mag uh, magic or using a minion. Where they can be whatever they want to be on the screen. That just comes with the territory being melee though. Really... What we should be talking about is how melee needs a extreme buff. That's really what we should be talking about. <laughs> and melee should be able to one-shot everything. And more importantly, Wild Strike should be the most busted skill in the game. But that's a video for another day. Uh, the move, the, the the moves, the rooms here and moving between the rooms, I like a lot as well. Just you know, having having to pick between not only which room you go in next, but where that room goes. So in this scenario, I have the boon that lets me see an additional room ahead. So in this case, like I can plan out, okay, I'm here right now, traps do more damage, cool. If I go here, then I can go into these two rooms. This room has stacked deck if I complete the Sanctum. So if I think I'm gonna go far, then I can go towards that room. Or if I go down here, well, I can't go into this room, but if I go down here, then I can also go to the merchant and buy a bunch of uh, boons. But I know I don't have a lot of coins, so it would make more sense to go in here where I don't even get an affliction. And I also uh, be able to get some items. I don't have to get a boon or a, a what's it called? A debuff, a curse, or whatever if I, by going in here. I can just go here, here, and then finish and go to the boss. I like that. I think the bosses are pretty cool as well. Uh, I completed the Sanctum. Once, I'm working on a second completion right now on my other character, which is a minion build, which is a Dancing Dervish build, um, which I love all my heart, but I need to get more items for it. Uh, I like all the bosses. They all have decent telegraphed attacks as well, but I think they can do a little more. So like here my build sucks, so like this is the room probably where I'd, where I'd wipe because I'm being an idiot, like right now. But yeah. The build the build is fun, the AoE is super satisfying, it's just lacking in the damage compartment severely. You don't understand. Oh, I didn't grab the ring. Oh well. You defile this. So right now I'm just working on other builds that can go further and I have the build in mind. But in terms of actually like going through and clearing maps, this build does does the job pretty well. Even, even when I'm slow as long as I can get that sword down on the ground to hit that smite, it's 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 all I need to get through the maps. They'll struggle a little bit on the bigger bosses and stuff like that. But they'll get the job done. And the mechanic of being able to oh that was not a ritual enemy. Uh but the mechanic of being able to build up rage and pretty much have Berserk up and running for longer is super fun and it's probably something I'm gonna to try to use on another character. Probably an Inquisitor. If not, just running it just like raw dog and on a berserker for absolutely cranked damage. Uh, that's probably what I'm gonna do. I'll also admit I haven't played in a very long time. 
So they did a lot of changes. For example, crafting, harvest crafting, completely different. I love this. This is amazing. I literally, I go into the harvest and I just pick whatever color I want. And I kill it and I can use the crafting stuff later for whatever craft I need. This is an amazing change. I love it. Some people might hate it. I don't know. I don't know what the reception is. I wasn't playing when they changed it. Unless they changed it with this patch, then I haven't heard anyone talk about it. But really good. I love it. In terms of my other characters, uh, I have my Dancing Dervish character right here, and then I have another character. It's a Scion. It's an Ascendant. Uh, this was just for experimenting with the, the, some of the different items that they added. Um, like right now, this character has the, if I can remember the name of it, the Sandstorm, or Sandstorm something uh, helmet that gives the spells the same base crit chance as the weapon you have equipped, and then you would equip that with the Tripanon, Tripanon, whatever it's called. Yeah, Tripanon. So this has this has 100% crit chance. This helmet makes it so your spells have the same crit chance as the weapon. So pretty much makes it so your spells are guaranteed the crit. And then Marlene's Fallacy for a huge critical strike multiplier increase. So this character was just based around that and messing around with that. Um, this character isn't dead in the water, but you know I was just messing around. The build moved around a lot. I had a ton of freaking regret orbs. So, but this was really just like a lightning character, um, which this character can still do. I just gotta move some stuff around and get the get the gear back on here. But this was just an experimental character. Um, and then I got my dancing dervish character. Which obviously is about the Dancing Dervish item, which I love. I always try to make a build with this. Um, and yeah, this character this character does good. It has decent survivability right now for what I need it for. This is pretty much a bossing character and a Sanctum character. Uh, doesn't really clear maps super fast, which I was thinking about respecting. It's Necromancer right now. I was thinking about respecting to um, Occultus, like the very first Dancing Dervish build I did. And using profane bloom for super clear and then just doing a bunch of resistance shredding but before i do that i want to get an all white triad grip so i'm waiting on that but this character does sanctums very well and this is the character that i just you know run through a map hop into sanctum use this character i'm going to farm sanctum using this character for now until i get this character up and running which is my ranger which is going to be a hope shredder build that I have all the items for, so pretty much as soon as I'm done here and I get this uploaded, I'm going to start leveling this character. The two builds I always use. I always use a Dancing Dervish build when I can, and I always get a Hope Shredder build at some point. And the Hope Shredder usually ends up being the build that gets me the furthest, um, outside of like, I don't know, somehow whenever I make an Inquisitor, it does crazy good, but I'm trying to not do it just yet. So yeah, that's my update. Who knows next time I'm ever going to upload. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this uh, this is the stuff I've been doing in PoE. That's how I feel about the league mechanic. I like the mechanic a lot. You know, it's, I feel like there's, it's not there's nothing. In, it's not crazy. I feel like there's not a lot of depth to it. But they're also adding stuff. So there's probably going to have to be a follow up on that. So but yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.